how would you feel if there's a way to get lower input lag, lower temperatures, and lower power draw all together? For the longest time, the belief has been the higher the FPS, the lower your input lag is. And I tend to agree. Those are directly correlated. The higher your FPS is, the lower your input lag will be. That is true. But sometimes you don't need all that FPS. When you see gamers playing Counter Strike at 900 FPS and they're running a 144 Hz monitor, they don't really need that FPS. In fact, at times that's so much FPS you can be getting screen tearing, the same thing as if you had too low FPS. So, okay, what would I recommend? What's the best thing to do? That is cap your FPS. That's right, we're going to be testing out different methods of capping your FPS in this video. So what ways of capping your FPS are there? There are three main ways that I know about and the ones that are typically recommended. Most obvious is just the game itself. Let's say you load up Call of Duty Warzone and you say, oh, in the game, I want to lock my FPS at 240 hertz, which is my monitor to refresh rate. Cool, I'm going to do that. There's another way. This one's a little more simple, still pretty easy. It's just loading up your graphics driver, whether that be NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, loading up and saying, I want to cap my FPS to this number. Pretty simple, all three of them have that option. The next one is using a program called River Tuner Statistics Server, also known as RTSS. River Tuner Statistics Server has an option where you can set a frame rate limiter, and that is a pretty easy way, it just hooks into the game. Some of you may know River Tuner Statistics Server because it comes with programs such as Afterburner and other GPU overclocking softwares. In this video, we'll be testing four games. We're gonna be testing Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, actually going into a Warzone game and testing, Apex Legends, Overwatch 2, and Fortnite. Fortnite was using a replay, by the way, so actual in-game material. We're doing this to get a real gameplay perspective, not just loading up a benchmark or something, but something that was repeatable, but also very easy to test. All these were tested at 1440p. The FPS I capped at was 270 FPS because I have a 1440p, 270 hertz monitor capping to my monitor's refresh rate. This PC is a 1300K, 4090, 7800 DDR5, one of the fastest gaming PCs in the world. If you're interested in getting your PC overclocked and getting your PC this fast, make sure you hit the link down below in the description. I overclock PCs, help support the channel, get you more FPS. I'll also leave a link down below to a video by Calypto. He's another PC guy, really into optimizations and all that stuff. He goes into the best ways to cap your FPS and what kind of multiples and stuff you should be using to cap your FPS just so you get the best input delay. But let's get right into the benchmarks. Starting out here with Modern Warfare 2. And as you can see, yes, uncapped does get slightly higher FPS, but look at those lows. When you look at these, so NVIDIA control panel and the in-game cap are not very good. The in-game cap is actually the worst one you can use here. I guess the only reason you might want to use this is if you want to cap your FPS in the lobby to something like 60 FPS, but other than that, I would not recommend that at all. River Tuner Statistics Server is very good. Basically, they're tied with uncapped, so if you are going to cap your FPS, definitely use River Tuner Statistics Server with Warzone 2. Now on to Apex Legends. As a lot of people may know, this game does have a 300 FPS cap hard set into the engine. There's no way of getting higher FPS as of right now. But look at this. River Tuner Statistics Server destroys every other method of FPS cap, including uncapped. This game, the engine really does not like running uncapped or running any other method of FPS cap besides River Tuner Statistics Server. It's beating it by... 50 FPS, you're getting higher lows. That is going to result in a much smoother game. You're going to feel that difference in games. You're going to be like, wow, this is smoother. The game feels smoother. It's clearer in my game. I can aim a lot better. Here we are at Overwatch 2. And this is one game I would definitely not recommend capping your FPS in. Now, most people can get 600 FPS in this game. It's not a very demanding game at all. But look at that. You're getting significantly more FPS in the lows here with uncapping your FPS. River Tuner's Statistics Server does tie with NVIDIA Control Panel there with the in-game FPS cap actually being the worst. But for this game, I would not recommend an FPS cap at all. The power draw also is not that much different. So just run uncapped and enjoy looking at 600 FPS in your game. Finishing off the benchmarks here with Fortnite. And as we can see, uncapped FPS 
does win here once again in Fortnite. So for the games that you can run very, very easily getting insanely high FPS, maybe you don't want to uncap your FPS. If you want lower power or you want to use G-Sync though, you are going to want to use River Tuner Statistics Server. That is going to be the best way of doing it. So here we have 600 FPS in average FPS on Uncapped is still insane. 300 FPS in the lows versus the next highest being 249 with NVIDIA Control Panel. But look at NVIDIA Control Panel having that terrible 0.1% FPS. Probably used some stutters using the driver. And then in-game is slightly better, but River Tuner Statistics Server is better. Still losing to Uncapped though. Now let's show you how to actually set up River Tuner Statistics Server. Here we are on my gaming PC, so I'm going to leave a link down below to River Tuner Statistics Server. If you have MSI Afterburner or any other overclocking software, you might already actually have this already installed on your PC if you chose to install it as well. But if you have not, make sure you just install it from here. And then we are going to open up River Tuner Statistics Server. So this is what it'll look like when you load it up. You're going to want to start by seeing the frame rate limit here. You're going to want to type in your monitor's refresh rate. So for me, I have a 270 hertz monitor, so I'm gonna type in 270, tap my FPS there. If you're using something like NVIDIA G-Sync, so let's say you had, I don't know, a 240 hertz OLED with one to use G-Sync on it. So I would type in 235. For anyone, just subtract five FPS if you're using G-Sync, just to make sure that G-Sync is always kicked in, slightly lower latency. But I'm gonna set it once again to 270. Then I want to hit the setup tab. This will load up the settings menu. You're going to want to scroll down and you want to enable frame rate limiter by hitting the check mark. Auto should be async. That is what performs the best for me. If you want to, feel free to test front edge sync or back edge sync, but I'm just going to use async. Hit OK. And then you can go into your games and you'll see 270 FPS is capped. One game this does not work in, by the way, is CSGO. CS2, I'm guessing, will not work as well because of the anti-cheat. In that game, it doesn't really matter. You do want the higher FPS most of the time, or you can also just set an FPS cap in the game itself. Well, there you have it. That's how you get smoother FPS, lower input delay, just overall a smoother gaming experience while also getting some lower temperatures. So in, as it's hitting the summer months and getting warmer, you don't want your PC getting as hot, heating up your room, you can fix that issue. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you have not already. Try and hit 2,000 subs. Let's see what you can do. Tell me what kind of monitor you have. Tell me what kind of FPS you're getting in games. And let me know if there's any games I should do an FPS boost guide on. But see you guys later. Peace.